good afternoon or good morning, uh, depending on where you're, you're, you're viewing this from in Australia today. And uh, I look forward to taking you through RareX. We've had some exciting news this, this week, or possibly last week it was, uh, when we came out with our, um, our, our deal we've done with Shanghai Resources, one of the world's largest rare earth companies and a, a very good partner for us uh, moving forward. So just quickly, the investment overview, uh, where we've come from, it's been a very exciting dynamic, sort of uh, 18 months since we uh, rebirthed the company through a backdoor listing in 2019. Uh, we put the Cummins Range Rare Earth project in there. We did some work on that project, uh, bringing it up to Jork 2012, and then we did our own, our own drilling program late last year, which was really, really successful for us. And you've seen a lot of the share price uh, driven on the back of that, that drill program. Uh, just recently, we've uh, executed a landmark MOU with Shanghai Resources. Shanghai Resources is a $4.6 billion rare earth company uh, located in Shanghai. It's equivalent to Linus, it's equivalent to MP Materials, it's one of the big boys. And it's also very active in the Western world. It's done some uh, spectacular investments, most notably its investment in MP Materials, which is now a $5 billion company listed in America. Also, what we've also uh, caught up with in the last sort of three months is a renewed interest in the rare earth space and rare earth prices moving up very strongly to where they should have been possibly for the last three or four years. But finally, we're playing catch up and we're very excited about those prices. Uh, lastly, I'll just touch on our joint venture we have with uh, Kinkora in New South Wales. Uh, we're very excited by the work they're doing there. Uh, still waiting for them to nail it, but they're getting very, very close to it, we feel. So our company, RE is a ticker, uh, trading 13 cents, uh, tick over 400 million shares on issue. Uh, our market cap hovers around the 50 million mark uh, consistently, and I still think that's relatively cheap compared to some of our peers in the space. You know, Hastings, et cetera, you know, they're all over about $200 million at the moment. So we've got a bit of ground to make up and we'll work hard on that this year. Our board is well credentialed to operate in the industrial mineral space. Our chairman, John Young, it's had a lot of success with Pilbara Minerals, which should be familiar to this audience. Uh, Cameron Henry, uh, he runs Primero Group, who's a very successful uh, engineering group. Uh, Gavin Beer is our metallurgist, who's worked on just about every single uh, rare earth project in the world. So we're in the process of giving him some sample to go away and do his test work at the moment. So rare earths, just quickly, what are they? Uh, a group of 17 elements that hang down the bottom of the periodic table. Very, very useful in modern life, uh, in rare earth permanent magnets. The ones we mainly focus on are neodymium and praseodymium, uh, collectively known as NDPR. They're used in uh, rare earth permanent magnets. So uh, They're on every wheel of every Tesla driving the motors, they're in every wind turbine, and they're in, they're in very high demand at the moment. And you're seeing that reflected in the prices. And I'll show you some graphs on prices shortly. So I just touched on this, but rare earth permanent magnets, that's the game, uh, NDPR. You're seeing exponential growth through this decade. Uh, it's not just a, a story for the last three months, it's a story for the rest of this decade. You're seeing growth in EVs, growth in wind power, especially offshore wind power. Uh, those will be the two main areas. Um, also in all your electronics, anywhere there's a small, a small motor involved, you're probably, probably involved with, um, with rare earths. So these are the prices of a couple of the rare earths I pulled out here. Uh, you've got neodymium on the left uh, and you've got dysprosium on the right. You've pretty much seen a doubling of prices over the last three months. Uh, ND's come up from a base of about $40 a kilo to over $80 a kilo now. Uh, Dysprosium's trading at about um, $340 a kilo. Uh, so Terbium, which I haven't got on that, uh, that um, slide there, is over $1,000 a kilo. So these are highly, highly valuable products. So you can understand why we want to be in this space and why we think we can make good money being in this space. So Cummins Range, our project, uh, located in the Kimberley region, just south of Halls Creek, an area that's very familiar to mining. It's got the Pantoro Gold Mine, the Savannah Nickel Mine. It's had an iron ore uh, mine operating for some time. The Northern Minerals uh, Browns Range project, which is a heavy rare earth project, is just over the Tanami, Tanami Highway, Tanami Track, I should say. So it's an area that's very familiar to mining, a very welcoming place to be. We have good relations with all, the, all our stakeholders from TOs to the pastoralists to the environmental groups, we have very good relations and we continue to work on those. Our port of access will most likely be Wyndham. We're also assessing Darwin as it's actually not that far away from here. And there's, there's absolutely nothing you can't get done in this part of the world, as I've, as I've already said. 
So when we took this project on, uh, it had a Jork 2004 resource, 13 million tonnes at 1.13 TREO. Uh, we quickly upgraded that to 2000 and, uh, 2012 Jork. Uh, it has a high NDPR content, which is the value driver. It has about 22% NDPR. What we, what we don't talk about there is the heavies content. It probably contains about 5% heavies as well, which is a, a big driver of value as well. In geology sense, it's the same as Mount Weld. It's a weathered carbonatite. It's a super gene upgrade process. But we also see a lot of potential at depth as well, and that's something we'll be testing further this year. The beauty of these style of deposits is they're free dig, they're from surface, they're easy to mine. The challenge is in the processing, and that's something we're working on now. Uh, late last year, as I mentioned earlier, we went in and did a bunch of drilling over 6,000 metres and had some very exciting results. Uh, I've just got one slide in here on what the, the drilling was last year, one cross-section, but there's some of the results we generated, over 100 metres at 3.6% TREO, you know, 90 metres at almost 4%, another 40 metres at almost 4%. These are grades that wouldn't be out of place at uh, Mount Weld itself. We're also seeing some quite exciting attendant niobium numbers and we're looking, we're going to, we're going to assess the niobium as part of the metallurgical test work as well. So what we defined in this drilling was a really high grade northwest trending channel and we were excited to see that because that was part of our theory about getting involved in this project. We don't think people had focused on the high grade core enough and that's, uh, that's what we did and we had a lot of success doing it. We also think this high grade core should extend into the primary and that'll be part of our drilling program for this year. So just quickly at Cummins Range in 2021, uh, we're, uh, we're busily working away on upgrading the resource from the drilling done in late last year and that should be, that should be out in March this year. The MET test work is underway and should be finalised in the first half of this year. And we'll be back out drilling, you know, late March, early April. Um, as you're probably aware, it's very hard to get rigs at the moment, but we've been lucky enough to get some and we should be out there in the coming months. We're also working quickly on uh, progressing through, you know, through to a mining lease application through various stakeholder engagements and that's something we're working on at the moment as well. So our strategy, what has it been? Uh, to date it's been about producing a concentrate. We didn't want to go down the route of trying to build our own uh, cracking and leaching plant and we, we, um, we, we are, we're definitely committed to this process. Uh, we've got our metallurgist Gavin Beer helping us make a concentrate and this is designed to reduce the capex. Capex on the, on the back end cracking leaching plants are very, very expensive. And as part of this we've, have, we've had to go out and identify who the downstream players are in the world and that, that leads us pretty well into our deal we've done with Shanghai Resources. So what we announced last week was our MOU with Shanghai. Uh, Shanghai, as I mentioned at the start, a very large uh, rare earth company. Uh, it's, a, it's a Chinese company, but it's very much got a, a Western-focused uh, ethos. It, it lives, lives and dies by itself. It's not an SOE. It has investments around the world. It has investments in MP materials and also, and also Greenland minerals. So what we've done as part of this deal is um, we're going to set up a rare earth trading company together and we're going to go focusing on um, looking for rare earth concentrates around the world. And uh, Cummins Range will likely be one of those concentrates that feeds into the capacity that Shanghai has both in mainland China and in Southeast Asia. We intend at the time to look at jointly investing in rare earth refineries uh, alongside Shanghai. So who is Shanghai? Uh, mentioned them there quickly. Uh, they're listed on Shanghai Stock Exchange. Uh, what's probably very interesting to note here is they are the major supplier of rare earths to Apple. Uh, through their recycling plants in China. Um, so they, as I was mentioning earlier, they're very much focused on supplying the West. They're not just your traditional SOE. Uh, they very much have a, have a West, Western looking outlook and we're very pleased to be involved with them. So just quickly and finally, our New South Wales copper gold assets. Uh, we're free carried in some very exciting exploration going on over there. Uh, that's uh, being carried out by KCC, Kinkora Copper, led by John Holliday, who's a, a very very well credentialed geologist, uh, discoverer of Cadia. And we're, we're excited by the work they're doing. They've had lots of smoke, lots of encouragement in the SCARM. Still yet to nail it in the deeper porphyry hunt, but uh, they continue to drill. And why do we like, why do they like that part of the world? And why do we like that part of the world? Uh, it's next to North Parks. North Parks is one of the um, largest porphyry deposits in the world, uh, second only to Cadia in that part of the world. And, we, and they continue to drill there. Um, as we as we speak. Here are some of the results I've had, some of the very exciting uh, bits of core that have come out. 
And yeah, we'll see, we'll see where they go with this. So just uh, finally, who are we? We're a rare earth company focused on Cummins Range. Uh, we've attracted a, a very well-credentialed partner in Shanghai Resources to help us execute on our rare earth strategy, both in terms of uh, developing Cummins Range, trading concentrates, and participating in the refining business. We also have excellent exposure to New South Wales uh, in what's happening in a, a porphyry copper gold hunt there, led by uh, Kinkora Copper and some well-credentialed um, explorationists. And with a modest market cap of 50 mil, as I said earlier, I see some, I see a lot of upside left in our share price and we look forward to seeing the progress of this year and uh, where the share price might take us. So thanks for listening. Thanks, Jeremy. We've had uh, a few questions here. Yep. Uh, one chap asks, is the dream dead at Mount World North? Uh, yeah, we drilled, we drilled Mount World North and uh, look, it didn't come in for us. Uh, that's expiration, unfortunately. We uh, had a good geophysical target to drill there and it didn't turn out to be what it was, um, what, what we hoped it was. It was just a, a late stage granite. So we'll move on from that project and uh, keep going. Right, so we can tell this gentleman the dream is dead. The dream is dead. We will do that. We'll report back to him. <laughs> uh, another chap asked, how are the rare earths priced? Uh, rare earth price are traded in Shanghai on the Shanghai metals market. Uh, you can go to the website daily and see them updated. So. You know, they're traded by the tonne or by the kilo uh, onshore in China. And we've also been asked, who would be the main customers of semi-processed products? Uh, look, of carbonate or of concentrates at the moment, you're still exclusively, the only capacity resides in China. The West is working on building out its capacity, but in my view, there's still four to five years uh, before they can process any meaningful amount. So at the moment, you're still taking it to China. Right. And finally, were you approached by anyone from an American interest? Uh, look, we've had preliminary discussions, but nothing as advanced as uh, what Shanghai was prepared to offer us. And I think um, given our stage in life, uh, when a $5 billion gorilla like that wants to do a deal with a, a modest $50 million company, we're, we feel like it's a good thing for the company to do. Uh, and last of all, what's your, what do you see as the next key share price catalyst? Uh, look, I think people are waiting for us to uh, consummate our deal with Shanghai. At the moment, it's a non-binding MOU, and we're working quickly to make that a binding deal. And then, of course, getting on with drilling and progressing the project in, in March. So probably March, April will be big months for us. Right. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.